gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal, the most vicious, the most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never right. been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? So now the moment of truth is not far off. This will be the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And look at young Mike Tyson, age 20 years old. He could go into the record books tonight as one of the very youngest heavyweight champions of all time. If he can capture the title from the reigning champ, Trevor Burbank. Kevin Rooney with him. He's straight at Burbick, hanging on like Mitch Green did. Bone pressure Smith. Straight jab by Mike Tyson. 20 years old, Mike Tyson on his way to becoming one of the youngest heavyweight champions of all time. Bangs the body. Wow, with that uppercut is Tyson. Catches him with a light left hook, and he goes down. He goes down. He should be able to get up from this. His legs may be shut. They are. As Trevor Burbick falls back into the hole. I don't know if he's going to be able to continue. He's got the heart. But his body won't let him do what his mind wants to. And he's counted out. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> Come here to talk about Mike Tyson, right? Also known as Iron Mike, right? So, a little bit about Mike, right? He came in out of Brooklyn, New York. You know, um, he was raised up on the streets. You know, he was in a lot of foster care, right? And um, he wound up eventually, while he was in the hood, wound up running into this guy after he got out of jail, right? In the juvenile, right? A guy by the name of Customato. Well, Customato took a liking to him and started training him. And Customato also let him move in the house with him. So Customato portly raised him, showed him how to box, helped him with his training, brought a lot of the coach, uh, brought a lot of the trainers and coaches around him to make him a better box boxer, right? Well, Mike coming up on the streets, you know, he used to snatch purses. He used to, he used to, we grew up fighting just from because he was one of the biggest kids around. So he grew up fighting wrong me and any kids when he was a child, right? So, Mike, you know, he had a um, rough life coming up. And uh, Mike was born June 30th, 1966. Um, he debuted in his first match, May 6th, 1985. So, you know, um, between his like, amateur career, is not really much of him in the amateurs, really. But um, I'm pretty sure with Customato and his street, him street fighting, he really didn't have to do a lot of amateur because by the time he got the custom motto, he was already fighting. It just didn't have a real technique, form, boxing status to it. And custom custom motto helped formulate the boxer that we know now as Mike Tyson Iron Mike. So when I was coming up right in the nineties, right, um Mike was like one of the first boxers I came across because at the time his fanfare was out of control, you know, most adults were sitting down watching ESPN and all these shows with him on it because that was the biggest sports back then. You know, basketball was pretty good with Jordan, but, you know, besides Jordan shit, you was going to either be watching Jordan, maybe Deion Sanders, and maybe and Mike Tyson. But Mike Tyson was out ruling all of them because Mike Tyson was just like in a class of his own. Because he had the crazy fanfare and he was making the most money in boxing. So you got to realize Mike Tyson was one of the first boxers to make. I think over his career he made like 500 to 600 million dollars. So he was the first, one of the first boxers to ever reach that type of money. So you know of course you know with him coming out with having the, the white and black tigers. The regular tiger cubs that he raised and you know. He coming out having the, score, the tattoos on his eyes you know. Coming out with the goals in his mouth slugged up, you know, he just kind of set his own trend and own wave at the moment with that. So, um, I know one of the things that set him apart for me, just with a lot of other people, right? This nigga got that squeaky ass voice. You don't know, you like, how this big nigga got this squeaky voice, and but the voice just kind of catch you off guard, depending on where you're talking and how his pitch is. But... <clears throat> 
at the same time, in the 90s, he was basically running the 90s. You know, with um his knockout record, he went 19 KOs in his 19 first fights. So, you know, I don't even think that ever been done. And then he was knocking these guys out in, like, less than a minute. Some of the guys ain't even make three minutes in a round. He was putting them down for the count. And one of the reasons I came to mind Mike Tyson, you know, once I learned about, like, boxing and professional sports, a lot of boxing matches, sports, football, NBA, a lot of it is rigged, right? But <clears throat> you got to realize something. And Mike Tyson, with Mike Tyson era, with Don King, they didn't rig a lot of Mike Tyson fights. Because, I don't know if you remember, back then, anybody could challenge the heavyweight champion of the world. But some of them guys used to be very selective about who they would fight that was challenging the heavyweight champion of the world. So that means, you know, if a guy just ain't got no record, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times they wouldn't fight him. You know, a guy would have to have a good record, have to have a buzz, have to have a name. You know, but you got to remember, Mike was fighting everybody. So this means, that's why a lot of times, like, Mike is probably big to regular people, but you got to realize, you know he wasn't picking his fights. Because he was fighting Giants. This nigga 5'10". He was fighting niggas 6'5", 6'7", 6'8". You know what I'm saying? He was fighting niggas, even though he was heavyweight division, he was fighting niggas way bigger, way taller. And then, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, how you know they be reading a lot of the boxing matches. Anytime you catch one of them fighters like Floyd, any one of these niggas where they out doing the other boxer real bad, and they like making them like a spectacle of the other boxer, you know this shit got to be rigged because typically, why wouldn't you want to fight someone close to the same speed and what you is? Because then if you, it'll be a more of an even match. If you fought somebody on the same page as you, y'all going to drag the fight out more because y'all so evenly match. It just will come down to who got the bigger heart. But a lot of these cases with these other boxers, you know, even Muhammad Ali, his fight was rigged, but he didn't know. You know, the the promoters behind him was rigging the fights, but Muhammad Ali didn't know. So he was just, he was fighting niggas, and you know, he didn't know they was rigged. Like, on um, his biggest fight, they had all that publicity on um, the Rumble in the Jungle. I believe that's the name of it. Um, That was rigged. You know, um, one of his other fights, they rigged. But you got to realize, Mike, Mike, a street, a guy coming from the streets, Partly raised by custom model and group homes and all this shit. In and out of jail from a juvenile, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you got to realize. <clears throat> them two people from where he come from, even with custom model. Because custom model wasn't a big train at the time. But he was big for that area, in that area that it was in. But the world didn't know custom model. <clears throat> so with that being said, um... Them folks was really good fights like that. That's why a lot of time Mike Mike did knock out a lot of people because his knockout power was go ahead. My, my knockout power was unreal, so he was really just light people ass up on camera, you know. So it was just unreal how you know you put a white person in front of him, he could be bigger than him, he got bigger muscles than him, he could be all that shit. Mike was laying that shit out, and then what was crazy. You start realizing that a lot of guys that he was fighting, they was hugging them and putting them in arm wraps so he wouldn't knock them the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, <clears throat> what the guy named Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes knew he was going to get his ass with him. Larry Holmes just wrapping his ass up trying to make it through the rounds. A lot of them niggas that he was going up against, he was so much faster than them, so quicker than them, more powerful than them, that, you know, they was just trying to make it through the round. But he was knocking the ass out in 30 seconds. He was knocking the ass out in a minute. A lot of them didn't get to two minutes in a round because he was knocking them the fuck out and they was asleep. And he was putting them, to, you got to go back and look, he was really putting them in the hospital. So when they left the ring, they didn't go home and they didn't get up. They brought the stretcher for them niggas in that ring. Like, I don't, like if you notice now with boxing, <clears throat> nobody get put on a stretcher no more. Them niggas going to walk out of there alive. Mike was damn near killing him, nigga. Like, if you go back and look at his early fights when he was punching with all that power, man, uh, like three or four guys got carried out in the stretcher. They had that. Yeah, pick his ass up off the ring. So that's what made a lot of people go get crazy about 
Watch them niggas, because we was looking at them like, this nigga is just whooping everybody ass. And not only is he just whooping everybody ass, just the amount of he doing it, and he talking shit, and he just looked like he just came from out the street of Brooklyn in the middle of nowhere, and he just talking shit to everybody, black person, white person. You know, the interview with Manny the Mayor, right when he came out of jail, and he was coming back to um defend his heavyweight title, he told the um guy to ask him the question about, I think the guy asked him a question about jail, you know, um, I think the guy, I think the interviewer asked him something about, um, you know, when you was in jail, did guys try to rape you or something, you know what I'm saying? Mike was like, man, ain't no motherfucking body was going to try to rape me. He's like, I'll rape you right here on motherfucking camera. If we was in jail, you'll be my bitch ironing my drawers. Man, you ain't heard nobody talking to no white people and reporters like that back then. Mike was outrageous. You ain't hear that shit. And Mike literally told this man on live national TV, nigga, I would rape you in front of everybody right here. So, bro, the shit that he was saying, the shit that he was doing, and then he was just having this lavish lifestyle, you know, that really made it even worse, made it on a whole nother level. Like, his man, at that time, he was married to one of the baddest women in on. Um, well, not when he first got his hair away, but a little while later, he got married to one of the baddest women. I think she was a model at the time. I forgot her name. But y'all can look up. She was one of the baddest women there. But she was, she was some model. But she was in a lot of movies, too. I forgot I forgot her name. But she had long hair, pretty eyes, amazing complexion. But, you know, that could have been the cameras back then. You never know. But, um, you know, his... Mike Rick was 50 wins, 44 knockouts, 6 losses. Now, um, Mike also give reference to that, you know, they got other guys that had like, you know, 80 wins before his first loss. I think he said they had another guy that had like 100 wins with no losses. But this is the thing I want y'all to remember, you know, of course, it's giving respect. You know, a lot of times, you know, guys that you look up to and respect, you know, you still give them credit, but... With a lot of them old guys like that, man, them guys wasn't, unless you go back to like, man, Jack Nichols, or uh, one of them niggas, or uh, one of them first beginning boxing niggas, them niggas wasn't fighting like Mike. Now, like Jack, uh, I want to say Jack Nichols, whoever that, whoever the black guy was back in the day that hold like one of the longest records, nah, he was a bruising ass fighter, because you got to remember, they was fighting bare knuckles, they was going rounds. But you still got to take into account that oh, them dudes back then wasn't punching and had a speed of power that they have have in Mike here. But, you know, just because Mike looked up to him, he references them and give them their respect. But um, <clears throat> Mike was the youngest heavy ch heavyweight champion of the world. At 19 and 20, he became the heaviest heavyweight championship of the world. And one of his biggest fights um, that I remember was the Trevor... Trouble fight, you know, that was real good. Larry Holmes was real good. Um, that dude, that Buster Douglas, that was that was all right. But I was kind of wondering at that point when I see, when I seen, you know, of course Mike then admitted that you know, with the Buster Douglas and the six losses he did take, you know, he did admit that back then he was doing heavy drugs, you know, cocaine, crack. He was out with a lot of whores every night, so you know, between that. And the crack, you know, that probably what gave him his six losses. I don't think nobody could fuck with Mike, you know. And then if you go to any other heavyweights that came after him, none of them guys, even though they had great skill, like <clears throat> Manny Pacquiao, he got a great skill set. Roy Jones Jr., great skill set. Some of the other guys, great skill set. But, man, you got to remember, them niggas... A lot of these guys was dragging out the fight because they need to make the pay-per-view money. <laughs> they need to make <clears throat> their money. They need to make it look good. <clears throat> Mike was knocking these niggas out so fast. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas ain't get a chance to look good or drag the fight out. That's how you knew it wasn't a city because Mike said they came to him and told him, stop knocking motherfuckers out. But Mike went back out in the ring and started knocking motherfuckers out again. And also another thing, you got to re remember this, man, Mike was on somebody's ass in the ring, they wanted to stop the fight, 
What other boxer you know that knocking out a police that knocked out the police officer that came in the ring that knocked out he knocked the ring guy out. He tried to knock his ass. I think he punched him and he went through the ropes. He the police that was there. Mike them put his hands on him. Boom boom boom. He trying to get to the other guy. So everybody coming on the ring trying to stop him from getting to the other guy because he's trying to whoop his ass. Man, look, I'm pretty sure them people ain't get paid enough to get knocked the fuck out to take punches like that. I'm pretty sure they ain't, they ain't got paid enough. They probably just had got their ass whooped for trying to do their job intervening, but I'm pretty sure the ass whooping and punches they took along the way wasn't worth it. So what I did was I put together some of Mike's best highlights, the ones that I like, and um, I will be doing a part two of this. I'll just discuss his mother, his father, you know, um, some of his personal life stuff. And I'm about to just go ahead and um, put some of the clips that I, I enjoyed back then and come back again on the later day with another video. So now the moment of truth is not far off. This will be the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And look at young Mike Tyson, age 20 years old. He could go into the record books tonight as one of the very youngest heavyweight champions of all time if he can capture the title from the reigning champ, Trevor Burbank. Kevin Rooney with him. He's training. Burbank hanging on like Mitch Green did. Bone pressure spit. Straight jab by Mike Tyson. 20 years old, Mike Tyson on his way to becoming one of the youngest heavyweight champions of all time. Bangs the body. Wow, with that uppercut is Tyson. Catches him with a light left hook, and he goes down. He goes down. He should be able to get up from this. His legs may be shut. They are. As Trevor Burbank falls back into him, I don't know if he's going to be able to continue. He's got the heart, but his body won't let him do what his mind wants to. And he's counted out. Way he's backing up, he's got to do something a little bit more than this if he's going to try to win some rounds here. The time they traded blows. Larry with a sneaky right hand almost got Mike coming in. All right, bring, bring out, there you go. I go, Larry. 38 years old, Larry Holmes is in magnificent shape. The big question is how long can his legs stay strong? There's a lot of pressure on him constantly in this fight. He has to stay moving and stay moving on those legs away from Mike Tyson. Larry giving plenty of respect to the champion. Larry lets the right hand go, but Mike very slick ducks underneath it. Holmes comes with an uppercut of his own. Sticking and moving with that left hand, that's the way to fight Mike Tyson. But a 38 year old Larry Holmes could not continue that round at the round. Oh, a big right hand, and down goes the former champion. He was there running right the button. The count is up to six, seven, and eight. Larry is hurt. I didn't know he was going to be able to survive this round. He's definitely hurt. His legs are gone. And in comes Mike. It was a big right hand. Larry's down again. Down he goes. I don't know if he'll be able to continue. It's up to four and five. His eyes are clear. How do you feel? It's up to seven and eight. He's going to be able to continue. 
cannot be saved by the bell as the big right hand lands. Tyson knows he's going to be in big trouble. If he doesn't answer it, Richard Steele has moved in and has stopped the fight. It's all over. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal, the most vicious, and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody that's ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? <laughs> Get a picture of him twice a year. Yeah. Kiki, look at this, baby. This is what I kids me. Don't protect me.